We begin the fermentation exercise by measuring out the appropriate amount of yeast that will be added to each fermentation tube. We do this by utilizing the digital balance. Once we've successfully measured out the appropriate amount, we then transfer the yeast to a beaker so that we can mix it with the appropriate solution. Once we add the solution, we mix using a glass stir rod and allow this particular mixture to incubate at room temperature for five minutes. At the end of the incubation period, we now must transfer our yeast and solution mixture into a fermentation tube. We do this by first adding a small amount of the solution and tipping the tube back so that we can remove any air bubbles that exist in the top portion of the tube. Once we've succeeded in that, we will then add the remaining solution from the beaker. We'll repeat this for any other samples that we have before transferring them to the incubator. After taking the initial reading for the amount of carbon dioxide produced in both solutions, we're now ready to place the fermentation tubes into the incubator. Simply place them on the rack, and we close the door, and we will now let them incubate for a total of 40 minutes, checking them at 10 minute time intervals. The following was observed midway through the experiment, and you can clearly see that at this point in time, both samples appear to be performing some level of fermentation. As can be seen here, it does not appear that the tube on the left has as much fermentation occurring in it as the tube on the right, because the total amount of carbon dioxide bubbles is less than that of the tube on the right. Further examination at the end of the experiment does reveal that one of the two tubes was able to perform a great deal of fermentation, while the other one was not able to perform much fermentation at all. This, of course, is due to the amount of sugar available to the yeast in each of these two.